I remember standing with him, and after about four or five drinks, I used to look at him and I would think, this guy's got little short arms, a real high voice. If I gave him a quick shot, I could be champion of the world. And he looked over at me and went, don't even think about it. As for this coming fight on the 15th, I'm sure glad to be meeting Kezza Charles again, because I've always improved a little bit on the second time around. In their first meeting in 1954, Marciano retained his title in a unanimous 15-round decision. But a savvy Charles had Rocky on the ropes in the rematch three months later. Charles had the classic style, the classic movement, and uh, strong. He was a strong guy. Rocky had to outstrong the guy, outsmart the guy. He had a vicious fight with him. He was as close as he ever came, closer than he ever came, to losing in that fight. Charles had hit him with an uppercut and cut the, the nose. It was a rare type of a cut because it went up his nose. Marciano's nose has been split into two rivers of flesh and his handlers have covered it with a Pinocchio-like bandage. It looked like someone had taken scissors and there's this big gaping hole and the blood is pouring down. And when Rocky came back to the corner, everyone was sure the fight would be stopped. They said, Rocky, you're gonna lose this fight if you don't knock him out. The referee is watching the cut very badly, got a bad cut. And that put an additional fire under him. His face looked like it was a bleeding piece of meat, but he um, he sold. Rocky said, "Please give me one more chance." Not bothering me at all. For whatever reason, the doctor gave Rocky one more round, probably because he was the defending heavyweight champion. Marciano knocked him out in the eighth round, retained his championship. He said, first thing he did, he ran downstairs to the locker room, opened the door, went to a mirror, and he said he almost fainted. I get sick. I mean, I saw his nose, and when I tell you that it was just literally split, you could actually lift it up like that. Of course, Rocky said it will heal, and there'll be no problem. Um, he took everything lightly. It was one of those defining moments when you look at your big brother and you say, He's invincible. The head falling apart, the arms coming off, he just would not stop. This is what the world champion is. This is Rocky Marciano. Do you feel, Archie, that uh, you are, of course, he never has been? Well, that's always the first time. In 1955, light heavyweight champion Archie Moore embarked on a publicity campaign to entice Marciano title match. He put out wanted posters with Marciano's picture on it. Marciano would be on the golf course, he would get a note, are you afraid of an old man? He got under his skin and he finally agreed to uh, give more of the fight. 15 rounds for the heavyweight championship of the world. Moore hit him a straight right hand, enough to knock him down. He was a little stunned for a second. I was outboxing him easily. And uh, he came around with some awful bone-cutting jokes. It was a hard, grueling fight, and finally Rocky knocked out Archie. And then I... Seven months of Marcel faltering decision. On April 27th, 1956, he sent shockwaves through the fight world. He retired at 49 and 0. He was 32. I promised my wife that I would retire before the month of May arrived. I've never really been hurt in the ring, and I feel perfect physically, and probably still had two or three good fights left. He was tired of the training, he was undefeated, and there was really nobody out there to fight. He thought he'd done enough fighting. His back, of course, was very bad, and the grueling grind that he forced on himself of training, he'd lost some of his zest for that. He was angry that Al Weil was taking such a large cut of his prices. He didn't like Al Weil. He retired give him in excess of 50% of any income that I direct. He said, I'll be damned if I'm going to give Al Weil any more money. You know, once a boxer retires, they don't have that much left. They haven't gone to college. They don't have anything to fall back on, really. So he knew he had to hold on to his money, and when he sets a goal, he pursues it. Early in Rocky's career, he read a book about a fighter who earned an awful lot of money and ended up in skin. 
One of Rocky's greatest fears in life was that he didn't want this to happen to him. Preserving his cash was one way of his uh, knowing that he would never get back into that position that his family was when he was a younger boy. Rocky Marciano lived what is possibly one of the most bizarre lives following his career as anybody I've ever looked at in sports. He was running around the country all the time, trying to get his money. He'd be in uh, one state, and then he'd go to Chicago, and he'd bum a ride here, and he'd bum a ride there. Rocky earned a lot of his money by loaning people throughout the United States money and, and uh, charging them interest. Then if you didn't pay it back, that's really, that really irritated him. They owed him 5000 It had to be in cash, no checks. 10000 20000 And he'd put them in paper bags, and he'd always give his mother one of the bags. So Rocky'd say, oh, it's just, you're spending money, Ma. Besides loan sharking, Marcian businesses. Several restaurants. He got into the tomato business, into the potato business. Like the tomatoes made him money. Couldn't even can them. Nothing like he just didn't want to know anything about the business end of it. He felt if he got into a deal that it was a handshake, and if they reneged on this handshake, he would have his own way of taking care of it. If he wasn't lending cash, he was stashing it. He'd stuff his cash under his mattresses, hide it in toilet bowls, refrigerators. He hid money in pipes. In, uh, in, uh, in wall outlets. He had a, some kind of primitive immigrant attitude that you don't trust banks, you keep your money in cash. He just liked the f of cash. He was offered a $5,000 check once up in Montreal for giving a speech after dinner, and he told the man at the dinner party, he said, I'm sorry, I don't take checks. I want to. I said, there's no way I can do it. So Rocky called him back. He said, look, you've got to do this. I'm leaving tonight, and I'll take half. The chairman of the dinner had to go all around the room, black tie dinner, and collect cash from the people. And he gave him $2,500, and Rocky gave him the check and said, thank you. He loved the money, and he didn't spend too much of it. He had what I always said to him all the time, you have long pockets, short hands. Although frugal to a fault, Marciano would dig deep if he believed in a cause. Are you crazy? Oh, my God, no! Oh, my God. It was $2,500, $3,500 for guest appearance, for speaking. And if he knew a fighter was down and out, he'd call him up. And he'd say, listen, I got a spot for you. And then he would tell the other party. I'm saying, look, I can't make a, I have a double date, but I'll come back for nothing. But give Joe Walcott the, the spot, give Ezra Charles the spot. As a child, got a terrible disease late in his life, and Rocky uh, threw a tremendously big fundraiser for him. Felt very proud of what he was able to do for as a child. If he liked you, he'd, he'd stand in your store all day long. He'd lend his name to you. If you were his friend, he'd try to help you out. John, John, I asked a couple of fellows that said they knew you, and they told me that you knew absolutely nothing about boxing. Uh, how yes, come but last knowledge? night I met a man, and he said that with boxing you can make a fortune. If I would make you, I mean, if I would talk you into fight again, we could all make a million dollars. After refusing lucrative offers to fight Floyd Patterson and Sonny Liston, Marcia accepted ten thousand dollars signed bout in Miami Beach that was billed as the heavyweight fight of the century. Both men undefeated. Ali, 29 out of 29, Rocky, 49 out of... Well, I'm, I'm glad that we've got a computer being the uh, man that makes the decision. I've never predicted a fight in my life. I've never knocked anybody before a fight, and I'm certainly not going to start now.